Hello. Not sure if my video is connected yet. How's everybody doing? I think I'm doing this right. Let's hope. <laughs> I am not the best at technical things such as this. But um, if you're here and if you're watching, hi, my name is Carly Bell and I like to do machine embroidery tutorials. So I, this is my third YouTube live. Last two times, each time is something went wrong. This is number three. Let's see if number three has better luck. <laughs> but um, tonight, uh, by popular vote on both YouTube and in my um, Facebook group, um, people wanted to learn more about In Brilliance Essentials um, software program, which is the program I use for all of my embroidery designs. So I wanted to just go over some basics with that program tonight and um, show you how to use it and why I love it so much. So give me one second and I want to post a copy. I don't even know how to do this. Let's see. How can I... I want to post a link to this video. Let's see, and I'm going to put it in the Facebook group now. And excuse me if you hear children screaming. My oldest daughter is having a friend sleep over tonight, so they're playing uh, right outside my craft room here. <laughs> Okay, so live on YouTube now. Post link. Alright, so now it is going on the Facebook group. And let's see. Can someone say hi in the chat box for me? Because I want to see if I can see the chat on my computer screen. It's not showing me anything. Let's see, it says chat rate five, but I don't see a chat. Let's see. Maybe I need to be in regular YouTube. Sorry if I'm a little slow, guys. I told you I'm not technically inclined. <laughs> Y'all should see my setup right now. All right. Okay, I see it on my phone. Hey, okay, I see the chat on my phone. So, can't see it on my computer though. That's, a, that's okay anyway, because I'm going to be switching to, um, y'all can see my computer screen, so I won't be able to keep it on there anyway. So, let's see. Oh boy, hi Con. Hi Gonzalez56. Hi The Wonderland Stamper. Star Raymond. Michelle, Brenda, Monica, Stacy, Susan, Terry. How's everybody doing? Judy, Stacy, Adela. I think that's how you say it. Perez, that's a pretty name. Um, Loretta, lovely MSL1, Phyllis, Jazzy Nail. How's everybody doing? All right, so I'm going to keep my phone right here so I can see your chat um, while we're talking. So, um, as I said, tonight we're going to go over in Brilliance Essentials. Um, I have done this a couple times in my Facebook group, but this is the first time doing it on YouTube. So um, if you are familiar with in Brilliance, um, it is a software company. And um, I, I, I'm bad about this, and I know a lot of people are. So if you've never heard of it before, you hear people say, I use in Brilliance, I use in Brilliance, I use in Brilliance. It is the platform you could say or the company and brilliance has several software programs um, that they sell and so the one i'm gonna go over tonight is called in brilliance essentials which is what i recommend everybody start off with also i wanted to let you know at the beginning if you haven't heard of it or tried it out before there are some free versions that you can try 
before you buy. You can do a demo version, which will allow you to try any of their software programs. They have um, two kind of um, levels, a beginner and a more advanced for editing designs that you purchase online. So I love buying um, embroidery designs from Creative Applique, Itch to Stitch, Joy Cake Designs, um, So Fancy. There are tons of places. Etsy has a ton of adorable embroidery designs that you can buy online. Yes, can I help you? <laughs> First interruption. <laughs> so um, now once you get those designs, a lot of people ask me, well, how do I put it on my machine? Or how do I add two different designs together? Or I want to put a name with the design. That's where Embrilliance and Embrilliance Essentials comes in. So with the demo version, you can try out any of their programs. The only caveat is you can't save anything to actually stitch it out on your machine. You have to buy one of the versions, whether it be Essentials, um, the more advanced one is Enthusiast, and they also have digitizing software, and that's called Stitch Artist, and it comes in three levels, but the demo lets you try all of that out. So like, for instance, I just started playing with digitizing, and that means I'm making my own designs. And I played on the demo version for a good two months before I finally um, purchased Stitch Artist, and I purchased level two. So that's the great thing about the demo. It really lets you feel it out and see how to use it before you pay for it. Um, now, one of their other free versions that they have that does let you do things on it and save it is called Embrilliance Express. And with that program, it is a free download, but you can only do lettering or fonts on it. So if you purchased a font online, you could open that font in Embrilliance Essentials, type out your name, and save the name. Or if you want to make a phrase or something like that. But that's it. You can't add a design to it. Another thing with Embrilliance Express, you can't use the multi-position or repositionable hoop feature. It won't split designs for you. So that's the intro to the two free versions. And then what I'm going to show you today is Embrilliance Essentials. And that's the basic program I recommend to everybody. There's so many features. I'm still learning new features, and I've been having this program for four or five years, I think. Um, and so I'm still learning stuff about it. So, hi, Carol. I'm looking at my phone. All right. Hi, Laura Lace Fabrics. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, Eartha. Hi, Kenyana. Kenyona. Sorry, I am terrible. I can't spell, much less pronounce things, so please excuse me. <laughs> okay. Um, Carol's slower on crutches. <laughs> I hope you're feeling all right, Carol. Um, so, okay, so with that, I wanted to show you, if you are brand new and do not are not familiar with Inbrilliance, I wanted to show you a blog post I wrote, um, and I will put a link to that in the chat now, if I can find it. Of course, I don't have it. Okay, let's find it here. So give me just a second and I'll put a link um, to the blog post I wrote about in Brilliance. And this breaks down and tells you the different programs, Essentials, Enthusiasts, what Thumbnailer is, and Stitch Artist. Those are the four I go over in that um, post. And in that post, you can find links to all of those programs to bring you to and Brilliance's website. Um, and as a disclaimer, I am a Embrilliance um, affiliate. So I do get a small commission if you do um, purchase the Embrilliance uh, software through my link. So thank you so much if you do. It really helps. All right. So all right, Joanna said, I just finished setting up my machine while following your unboxing video. Thanks for making it so easy. Oh, congratulations on your new machine. I'm excited for you. Um, I'm glad it helped. So, all right. So I put the link 
for uh, the Ambrillian's post there. So now let's get started. Minimize this. Okay, you're going to see some weird stuff, and we're going to switch to my computer screen, but you should still see a little box of me in the bottom left corner, and then you'll see my computer screen. So let's minimize that. Okay, so um, this is what Ambrillian's Essentials look like. Um, I do have a few extra buttons on my top toolbar up here that do not come with Essentials. Um, and those are ones that come with Stitch Artist, but I'll go over all of them for you. So you have your basic um, new design here, if you want to start a new hoop and, and go from scratch. This is to open a design, so say you downloaded um, a design off of Creative Applique and it's on your computer. One of the first things you have to do is unzip the file. So almost all embroidery designs come zipped and they will come in multiple sizes and multiple formats. And that is dependent on which machine you have. And Brilliance Essentials and all of their programs work with any brand machine. The program works with any brand machine. And when you purchase an embroidery design online, it comes in about 10 different formats. And you choose the format that matches your machine. Um, I don't know all of them off the top of my head, but if you have a brother or a baby lock, it's PES. If you have a Janome, I think it's J-E-F. Um, and if you have a Rakoma, I think it's D-X-T. And Singer might be X-X-X, if I remember right. I'm not sure. But you can look up and Google the brand name embroidery, embroidery machine you have with format, and it will show you which format or what kind of um, dot and then three letters that is compatible with your machine. So whenever you purchase a design, it will come in all those formats, and then it will usually come in multiple sizes, and the sizes usually correlate to what hoop you're working with. So if you have a smaller um, embroidery machine, like the Brother, I think, SE600, um, that one only goes up to a 4x4 four four hoop. So you'll see designs usually come in 4x4. Four four. The Brother PE800 uh, goes up to 5x7, the Brother NQ1600E goes up to 6x10. And then like my new machine I just got, the Persona, um, has an 8x8 frame. So usually the design will come in multiple sizes. To, and it'll, you can pick whichever one works for you and the hoop you're working with and the machine you're working with. And then you can open up those designs in the software. So for instance, let's go open something. Um, so I have my flash drive here with oops, um, my stuff. And I know someone uh, on, in Facebook X to show you how I organize things. <laughs> I have ideas of how to organize it. And I started to do it a long time ago. But um, I have not been staying on top of it like I should. Okay, so here is an apple and pencil split. Um, and I have something called Thumbnailer, so I can see um, a preview of the design on here. So, oh, this one's cute. Okay, so let's say, and now you see, look, it comes in 4x4.sew.art. Um, so I have a brother, so I'm going to look for PES and a 4x4. So I'm going to double click that. Oh, wait. I'm going to drag and drop it. See, it tries to open it um, with my demo version when I double click it for some reason. So I just drag and drop it in. You could also hit the open button. And when I do that, I can click it and, um, and it will open as well. So here is a design. I don't know where it's from right now, but I'll tell you later. <laughs> so what do you need? I just need a pen. A pen? Can you go downstairs and find a pen? Please. I don't have one right here. Those are markers. And that's a pencil. I'll just use a pencil. Okay. Make sure you got something underneath it so it don't bleed through the page. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so here is a really cute apple split design. And I opened it up in 4x4. Four four, and it, you can see it fits the hoop perfectly because I already had the 4x4 four four hoop selected 
um, on it. Now say I change my mind, I want a 5x7 hoop. Because um, this would be, 4x4 four four I think is like a good size for a onesie. Um, but once you get 9, 12 months and up, I think 5x7 fits, um, fills the space a lot nicer. Um, so say I want a 5x7 design. I'm going to go to this little um, bar at the top and uh, this folder. And that's your preference window. And here it says hoops. And I have a brother machine, so I have brother size hoops selected. But you can pick the format that works with your machine. And right now, where am I? I'm at 100 by 100. And it's all in millimeters, but you can easily see the inches by looking here, or approximately 4 by 4. So 130 by 180 is 5 by 7. So I'm going to hit apply and hit OK. And now I'm going to zoom out. So this is still the 4 by 4 design, but now we see how small it looks in the 5 by 7 hoop. So I can delete this. And all I just did was hit delete on my keyboard. And now I'm going to scroll and look for the 5 by 7 PES. And drag and drop. Oh, but now it is sideways. So if I want to look at it in the right orientation, just for my eyes, I can click the preference window and hit rotate 90 for rotate 90 degrees. Hit apply. OK. And then I can click my design. And... I think this is rotate, yes, rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, yeah. So now I have a 5x7 design and a 5x7 hoop, and it's all nice and ready to go. So let me look real quick at my phone and say, oh, it's freezing, Brenda said. Is it, am I still frozen? Let me know. All right, the wonderful stamper said she just bought essentials from my link today. Thank you so much. All right. All right. See, Whirly said the Persvana Viking is the VP3 format. Um, the freezes let you all experience my daily life on satellite. We can't get anything better where you live. Oh, let's see. You can also edit names of the hoops by hitting edit. I call mine 5x7, for example. Oh, there you go. So, see, I'm still learning things still learning things. Every time I do an Embrilliance tutorial, like all the ones I've done on Facebook, someone's taught me something as well. So this is awesome. Okay, so I hope I'm not freezing anymore. Let me know. So we have our design here. So this is a cute split design. So this is a space here for a name. So say I wanted to add a name to it. I'm going to click this A button. So there are the one of the things I love about Essentials along with a, a lot, but one of the top things is something called BX fonts. And these are fonts that are made specifically to use in this software that almost everyone that sells fonts, when they sell it in all the formats for all the different machines, they also sell it in BX. So if you buy a font and you, you know, you're looking through the list of the formats and it, and it gives you BX as an option, you can install it on your computer and you install it just the same way that I opened this file. So I just clicked it and drag it over. You would do the same. You would find it in your Windows Explorer or Finder when it's unzipped and it says the name of the font and it says the size and it says .bx. You have to install each size. So you would drag it and drop it over. Um, but once you have it installed, you can click this A icon and now this is your fonts window. So there's lots of options on it. This is the place where you're going to enter your text. But first pick your font. So here's the font and we have a bar. So these are all of the BX fonts that I have installed in my Embrilliance Essentials. And each font comes in multiple sizes. And for fonts, the size that reference is how tall the letter is. So I can see by my grid, each one of these boxes is an inch. So I can tell that this is a little bit bigger than an inch, the space between these two bars. So I'm probably going to pick a one inch uh, font. So the one that's selected is one of my favorites. It's called Ellie right here. So I'm going to click one inch and say I wanted this for Elise. 
I'm going to type her name and hit enter. And then I can select the name and drag it and put it right in between the two blue bars. And I can make sure it's centered. So I just look at this black box here and I use the key, the arrows on my keyboard so that it's lined up on this center line here. And then just eyeball that it's in between the two blue lines. So, and that would be it. So let's see. Um, okay. So, um, what else did I want to show y'all? Uh, so, there was some, oops, I zoomed in. All right, does anyone have any specific and brilliance questions that they wanted to ask? Um, if not, let me go through and tell you some of the features of the font. So with this design, you know, it's relatively simple. I wanted it straight across. But say I was doing something else. You have lots of options with BX fonts. You can change the style that the font looks. Um, so if, like for instance, I did a backpack where I did the strap of the backpack, and I wanted the name vertical, so all I did was in Embrilliance open the hoop, type the girl's name, and then I clicked vertical so that when I actually hooped it, so say I don't use this design anymore, and now I'm just doing the name, I made her name vertical. And sometimes with vertical you want maybe the space in between the letters to be a little bit closer. So here's a, a bar here that you could slide back and forth that says space. And I can reduce the size of the space in between each letter. So then that would make it fit. So I could fit it this way or I could rotate it this way so that if I'm on the hoop, I would lay the strap of the school bag across the hoop this way. Something like that. So it depends on what you are working with and how you want it. Um, also something cute, I like um, boys uh, monograms that look like this. So that's really cute. So for like Elise it would be B E E. Her last name starts with a B, Elise and Evelyn. So um, you know this is a, a monogram option. So you can make a monogram with any of the fonts that you already have on your um, BX fonts. So if I wanted to do something a little thicker, I could do that. Um, and so let's see. And then they have it the opposite way if you want the monogram this way. Um, if you want to curve the font, you can do that. So that looks cute. Um, somebody was asking in the group today, they wanted to put a name like on the back of a hat. Um, say like you wanted to put a name like right above, say, you know, this one wasn't mesh and you wanted to put a name right above the, the hole in the back. You can use this um, feature and in Brilliance to put a nice curve on it and then you can print it out and make sure that it fits and looks you know size proportion looks great to go around that curve so that would be something okay let me look at the phone now how did you get the pictures of your designs on the file folder so that is thumbnailer so that's one of the programs that is offered by in Brilliance um, it's only $40 and it you don't even have to have any of the other in Brilliance programs for it to work. So all it does is allows you to see a preview picture of any embroidery design on your computer no matter what the format is. So it's a really nice thing to have especially when you have seven years now collected of embroidery designs <laughs> and you forget what you have and what they mean and you have you know 15 pencil designs. Um, that have pencil in the name so um, and that can be found in the link I put at the beginning of the chat um, with the in Brilliance Essentials post I have um, a description of thumbnailer there and a link to it okay 
Have you ever worked with one large design that takes up the whole space of the repositionable hoop? Um, yes. So I did a video on the repositionable hoop, um, and it's it's pretty straightforward. So let's delete Elise. So you would first go to your preference window. And so right here you could see hoop style. We have normal listed here. You would need to click on multi-position. So for the uh, PE800, the 5 by 12 is this hoop here. And then if you have the SE600 or is it PE550, the, the one that has a 4x4 hoop, you can get a multi-positionable hoop for that machine as well and it, it goes up to 4x7 so that you would click that one. So say I'm doing the 5 by 12 and hit apply. Okay, and I can zoom out. So now what the multi-positionable hoop does, and, it's, and the, what the software does, is separates the design into two files. And on your machine, first you hook up the hoop um, in the front section and stitch out that design. And once that design is finished, you move the hoop to the other side and then load your second design and stitch it out. And every time I've done it, I've had no issues where you can't even tell where the design split. So at first I was nervous to where I made sure where the, the line was. So, you know, this is the middle of the hoop. But what it does is it separates this as a 5 by 7 design area. And then it takes this and has a 5 by 7 design area. But say you put like... Um, I did, what did I do? I did some like scrolls. Um, I'm trying to remember where they were though. I think they're in a font I got from Embroidery Boutique. It was like some little extra, um, I don't even know if it's in here, but um, it was some extra things that came, but just say we did a we did a monogram. Let's do that. So it's five inches tall. And let's do an uppercase B in the middle. So I'm gonna grab that and drag it. Okay, it's too big for this anyway. Um but there we go. Okay, so say I did that right in the middle. It you can see that it overlaps if I if it if it did this as one frame, though it still overlaps there. And if it did this as another frame, you still have pieces over here. But with this being all thread, it would stitch as much as it could, and it would stop, and then you'd move the hoop, and then it would stitch the rest of this on the other side. And you can't even tell a line at where the two designs met up. Okay, so... All right, next, um, Susan asks, does Essentials have a tack down stitch for towels? There is a basting stitch. Let me see. Utility, base design. So I want to say in Essentials, you can baste around the design. So say, let's go back to a five by seven hoop apply, okay, and let's do a monogram. So say you're doing a, um, a monogram. Let me put this back to normal. Uh, I think I need to have little letters for the monogram to work right, the font. Okay. So, say I was doing this monogram on a towel, I would, and I wanted to baste the stitch before um, it started stitching the monogram, I would go to Utility and Baste Design. So that is going to put a square basting stitch, and you see it moved it to step one here. So that's going to put it right around the design. I think if you have the next step up. So in Brilliance is the program. I mean uh, Essentials is the program. See I'm always doing this. Um, but you can add on Enthusiast. 
after. From my understanding, you still want essentials. It's not like, do you want essentials or do you want enthusiasts? Enthusiasts is an add-on. And one of the features you get when you add on enthusiasts is you could baste the hoop. So then the basting stitch would just go around the perimeter of the hoop. And then you had whatever you want in the middle. Okay. I think your machine can also usually do a basting stitch. But I don't have my machine with me. I, I dropped it off to get serviced um, earlier this week. Okay. Okay, Terry says she has Thumbnailer, but when she goes to the tab, it just goes to Embrilliant Thumbnailer Control Panel. I hit OK, and then it goes back to my home screen. I don't know, Terry. I'll have to look into that for you. I know, I think all I did was install Thumbnailer, and then I didn't have to do anything after that. Um, then, it, you know, it just worked. So I'll have to look into it for you, or we may have to contact Embrilliance's, um technical support. Uh, okay, Carol says, you know what drives me nuts? <laughs> There's a lot of things that drive me nuts. Hence, the sipping. I forgot. Sip and stitch. Sipping. Everybody have a beverage. I don't have cameras falling over and stuff tonight, so I'm doing better with not needing as many sips. <laughs> um, okay, when the little box in the right with the font type and the color disappears, Usually takes me five minutes to figure out how to get it back. Okay, all you have to do to get it back is click the font. Okay, so click the font, and then over here in your kind of box for the fonts, you have color. So then I could change the color of the font to green and hit okay. So, and then you can go back to letters, and if I wanted to change it to Elise's initials. I could do that. I don't know why this is overlapping here. It should be spacing correctly. Maybe I need to pick a different. Uh, so again, now it's now it's showing the colors of the steps. So the first step is the basting stitch and that's set as black and now it's showing the color for the font. But if I want to get back to the font box I would click the words itself and then I can change the um, the monogram. I, said, I think I got another monogram called Carson. Here, let's try this one. Same thing. Oh, you know why? I have the space. That's why. I set my space back to where in the middle there. And it's still kind of overlapping a little bit. It should space by itself. But anyway, yeah, that's how you would get back to that, Carol. Um, how do you group all the stitches of the same color? So, Stacy X at. On your machines, unless you have a, um, like if you have the PE800 or the, the 4x4 machine, if you have multiple steps, so say, you know, I added another thing here and a different font and wrote Elise's name and I put that underneath the monogram okay but I made it the same and you can go to palette so I want to find the same green that my monogram is in but I don't want to scroll through here and look for it because I don't remember which green it was you can go to palettes right here and this will show you everything that you've already made on your on your design and show you the colors you're currently using. So now I can select the same green. So now the monogram and the name are the same color. So on your machine, the machine is not going to stop stitching. It's going to stitch that monogram and then keep going to the name because anything that is the same color that is back to back to back, it's going to continue stitching. So say, let's delete this and let's, let me move this E over so it looks right. Okay, and I'm going to delete my basting stitch for now. Okay, so now we're just back to a monogram. And then, like you can even, let's select this 
and this is align and distribute. So I'm going to go to distribute and I want the spacing across to be the same to the extent of the selection. Uh, that didn't look like it worked. I think because it's all the same font. It's not spacing the way it should be. Okay, let's say I want the E and the E to be green, but I want the B, so I'm just going to select the B. I want that to be black. I'm going to go back to my threads and or pink. You know how much that girl loves pink. Okay, so say we did that. But if you look at the steps, it's going to go green to pink to green. But I don't want to change my thread color. And you can do this on your machine. You can skip ahead and stuff. But if you don't want to mess with any of that and you want to have it set up in the computer to be ready to go to the machine and run the steps in order, you can do a couple things. I think since we have this as one font here, what we can do is go to utility and go to color sort. Now, when we go to color sort, it's going to show us the design and now it's moved it to only two steps instead of three. But you need to, let's see, what if we do new view? So that's the new view color. Now it's going to do the two green, so it's only showing one step because it's going to do both E's and green. And then it's going to do the B in pink or red, whatever color that is. So that is how you can get the software program to sort the colors for you so that you're doing less thread changes on your machine and not having to play in the screen and go back and forth in between steps. You have it already set up and ready to go. Okay, let's see. Uh, do -do -do. All right, Rosemary says she's been using the basting stitch to tack down the water soluble in smaller hoops instead of pinning it. That's a great idea. Um, you can enlarge the basting box. Okay, let's see. All right, so utility base design. Okay, so there's my basting box. Hey, hey, hey. Now you can make it go around your hoop. So you can make it fit your hoop. I want to say somebody in one of them brilliance group was making a big deal about how you need enthusiasts to do this. But now, see, there we go. Now we have the basting stitch. Let's make sure it's not. I'm always paranoid about it being too close to the edge of the hoop. So now you have a basting stitch that is the parameter of the hoop. Thank you, Rose, there. All right. What is the purpose of the basting stitch that is not part of the design? All that is is say you are floating. So towels are really thick, right? And it's really hard to hoop a towel in between the two pieces of the hoop and um, with the stabilizer. It's very bulky. So normally what I would do is only hoop some tearaway stabilizer and then I would spray some temporary spray adhesive on it and then I would just place the towel on top of the hoop and kind of rub it in to get it to stick to that stabilizer, but it's not hooped, it's just there. So one of the things I do to secure it is I put water soluble topper and then I pin the corners of the water soluble topper. But another option would be put the water soluble topper, put the hoop in the machine and do the basting stitch. And now your towel is secure to the stabilizer and the hoop. Stitch your design. When you're done, take a seam ripper or some tiny scissors and cut away the basting stitch and, and then rip it off the hoop. So I've never personally used it, but it is a good tool and you just have to find what works for you. Okay. Do, do, do. All right, Carol X, do the sides tack down or knock down? They tack down. So a knock down stitch is really nice also for towels. And we've been talking about that in the group. Someone did a beautiful, um, one of those Sherpa, Sherpa pullovers is like really thick and wooly. So if you would monogram it, the threads just really sink into the wool. So what you do first is a knockdown stitch, which is almost like a fill stitch. So say you did a, just like a filled in circle. And they sell them where you can just buy a shape of a knockdown stitch. Or if you have enthusiasts, you can make a knockdown stitch that went 
around this monogram completely. Like it wouldn't just be a circle. It would it would go around the edge of the design, um, and it would fill and do a knock. It would knock down all that wool and make it nice and flat. And then you'd put the monogram on top of that, so now you can see the monogram. And usually when people do a knockdown stitch, they do it the same color as the material of the towel or the, the pullover so that it doesn't look um, super noticeable. And then the monogram's a, a brighter color or a contrasting color, so you see the monogram really well. <sighs> okay. All right, Brenda said, how do you delete? I just uh, select, so say I want to delete the basting stitch, I select it here. This is kind of like your steps menu. I'm not sure like a, the correct name of it, but this shows you each step. And so like, and then when you press the little arrow down, if you have multiple colors, it will show you the step for each color. So here the E's are together now, and then the B's after. So say I want to, I want to delete the knockdown stitch. I would just go here. I mean the uh, basting stitch, Ugh. the basting stitch, and I hit delete on my keyboard, or I don't know if there's like a delete button um, that you can press on your screen. I, I literally just hit, uh, here we go, edit, delete, and so now I've deleted the basting stitch. Okay, when overlapping letters on a monogram, is the center over the top the outside letters or the outside letters stitch over the center I when I do a monogram so say let's do a vine monogram okay so now let's 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 do a couple things at one time so I'm gonna delete this all right I actually need to do a vine monogram for some cute little baby rompers a friend dropped off to me today so my vine monogram that I purchased I need to go back and look because I purchased them right when I started before I had in Brilliant, so I only had the PES version saved. So I'm going to show you how to, so say you don't have a BX font, but you have PES or whatever format for your machine. I'm going to show you how to merge designs. So first, let's find the monogram. It is under my fonts. And it's... The one I did last week for the um, the hat, it's itch to stitch, itch to stitch, intertwined vine. See, I only have it in PES. So let's do a big one. I have to look at the romper to see how big it can be. And let me check real quick what her initials were. <laughs> All right. Okay, her initials are. L R O. So the R, no, the O is the last name. So see with thumbnailer, I could see all of my designs. So, which it's it's cool because with each one it shows you this would be like the left or the right letter. No, that would be the middle letter. This would be the left or the right. This would be the middle of the monogram. This would be left or right. So I'm gonna open up her middle her last name first. So the last name starts with an O. And I'm going to drag and drop that. Okay, so either I can continue to drag and drop or I can hit this button here, Merge. And this kind of does the same thing. I would again look through here, find, let's see I had circle font open, so let's do this. I did 3.5 and we need an L. An R. Oh, I clicked it. Did I click it? No. Okay. Um, so this is the L. And then I'm going to hold the command or it would be maybe the Alt button if you have Windows. And so now the R is selected and the L is selected. And then I'm going to hit import. So now you can see them all here. So I'm going to select the R. And I'm just using my cursor on my computer, on the keyboard, to move it over. So I want it to overlap a little bit. And now I'm going to select the L, use my arrows, move it over. But this is all eyeballing, right? I don't know if I have more space, you know, like this. 
looks like obviously more space between the L and the O than the R and the O. So how I would fix that is I would select all of them and then I would do my alignment too. So because I use my cursor, I know that they are aligned in the, the center, but I can do that if, in case they're not. And then distribute. Say I wanted the spacing to be the extent of the selection and hit apply. So you see it moved that O over just a smidge. So now the spacing between each of the letters is the same. But the overall design, you see it how it's not in the center line anymore. So now I can use my keyboard and notch it over once. So this would be her monogram. So you saw how I did it. The O is first. I like the last name, the, the, the middle monogram, to be in the back and the two side ones to stitch on top of it. Okay, let me go back to YouTube so I could see the comments. Time for a second. Okay. All right, so where are we now? How does in Brilliance compare to Sew so It Pro? Okay, so that Sew so It Pro is the program that I had when I first started. Um, and I'll tell you why, it was cheaper. <laughs> so It Pro costs $60 and Brilliance costs 130 or 140. Um, so automatically, like right off the bat, I'm getting a cheaper one. So Sew so It Pro is a great program. It has almost all the same features as in Brilliance has. I haven't done a real side-by-side -side because I haven't played with So What Pro in years, but it, it was a great program and, it, and it, it served its purpose. My issues with So What Pro was I, when I got my embroidery machine, I, had a, I have a MacBook Pro. I got that when I finished grad school. And I'm trying to think how much longer. So I had my MacBook Pro like a year or two but I'd still had my old PC from before that. So when I got the embroidery machine and I saw So What Pro was cheaper, but it only worked with PC. So I was like, oh, I can use my old PC, even though it's like super duper slow. Um, I can use that and that would just be my embroidery computer. Well, not a couple months into having it, <laughs> using it as my embroidery computer, it freaked out and had to be reformatted. So I literally had to reformat the computer and start it from scratch like I, like I did when I bought it. So that erased the program. The program only gave you two installs. So I now am on my second install. So now I'm done. I've used my two installs. Then I had it for a year, maybe a little longer than that, and my PC died. I, and it really died. Like the hard drive failed on it. I had to do all this techie stuff that I'm not good at to figure out how to turn the hard drive of the PC into an external hard drive so I could get all my embroidery files off of it and onto my, uh, like a flash drive. That's my flash drive I got plugged in now. Like, all of that was super complicated. But now I'm done. Like, I've, I used my two installs and so a pro is, is gone. So I'd have to buy it again. So at that point, I was like, you know what? I really like my, back, my MacBook and Brilliance is one of the only programs that works on both Mac and PC. I have to buy another program at this point anyway. And in Brilliance has unlimited downloads. So like for instance, I've already used two downloads and now my computer is eight years old and uh, I, my husband has a computer I'm gonna be stealing <laughs> from him next year when he's done with school. But say like I wanna I upgrade and get um, a desktop computer, an iMac. I can install in Brilliance on there too. So I, no matter what happens computer wise, I can install the program on as many as I need to. So that's why I choose in Brilliance over So What Pro. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I've tried clicking the words. I'll watch my steps better next time to figure out what I'm doing. That's Carol. Um, hi, Jenny. Oh, you must have got a brim board. You're going to love it. Okay. So uh, if you watched last week's video, we did a hat, and we did it using the brim board that our very own group uh, member, Miss Carol, makes. So if you're interested in learning how to do hats 
with your flatbed embroidery machine. She's already made um, hoops that fit the PE 800. She's made hoops that fit the bigger brother flatbed machines that I call them the fancy machines because they don't have a bracket that snaps on hoops. The hoops slide in. So they're fancy to me. <laughs> but she made one that fits that and I think she's working on the Janome um, hoops next. Awesome. Congrats, Jenny. Okay, so what was some other things I wanted to show you? So I showed you how to merge. I showed you how to put PES letters in, how to space them. But you see that you have to do like each letter at a time where it's not like the BX fonts where you have to type them in. Oh, one of the things I wanted to show y'all people asked about last time and I couldn't show you my screen. So say you have two different appliques. So let's make a birthday shirt. New thing. All right, this is going to take me a minute because I'm going to have to find my, I think I have a font here. This is an applique. All right, so this is applique numbers. So let's go with this one. Here's a number one. Let's make a birthday shirt. This is a big number one. All right, let's put it right here. All right, so say we want to put a mermaid or something on the side here. Let's find a cute applique. Ice cream cone? Oh yeah, this is cute. Okay, so let's do an ice cream cone. Uh, five by seven PES. Okay, again, I'm dragging and dropping. That's easier for me. Ooh, that's way too big. We might need to turn the hoop around. Okay, so let's minimize that. All right, let's turn the hoop. And we'll uncheck that, hit apply. Okay. Uh, this might not have been a good thing, but we're, we'll shrink it, even though. So my rule of thumb for sizing things and you can tell by looking at this box up here. Um, so right now this is at 100%, both in the height and the width. Now I wanna shrink it. See those numbers change? So I'm gonna go down to 80. My rule of thumb is do not shrink or increase the size of anything more than 20%. So if I'm gonna shrink it, I'm only gonna go down to 80%. If I'm going to increase the size, the most I'm going to go to is to 120%. With satin, satin stitches, it's, it, this is a good rule. Sketch stitches, you really can't resize those much at all. Um, sketch stitches, um, once you resize it even a little, um, it compromises the sketch fill. And it starts to look like there's wider spaces. It looks uneven because when you open it up as it was made, there's nice even spaces in between each of the zigzag lines that go up that fill the sketch. With satin stitches you have a little bit more wiggle room to do with sizing. But I would say 20% is my rule of thumb. No bigger or smaller than 20%. And you can tell that by clicking the item and looking at these percentage numbers here. So just for this, that's a little too big. I'm not stitching this out. I'm just using it as an example so I'm going to go a little bit lower. And then here's my one. I think I'm gonna make that a little smaller too. So say it's something like that. And then I had room to like put a little name or something here, or if I wanted to make it, you know, like this. Okay, so the question is, say I use, you know, like a light color fabric to fill in um, this part of the ice cream or this part of the cone. I don't wanna see the satin stitch of the one underneath it. So you have to tell in Brilliance this is an applique. And you also need to tell in Brilliance to treat, let's see here, jumps and overlaps, treat objects labeled applique position as being filled. Because one thing in Brilliance does for you is it removes hidden stitches. So if you overlap two designs, it's gonna not stitch out the over the underneath part so that you don't have bulk and too much going on in one spot that can cause needle breaks and stuff like that. So, go away, okay. 
<laughs> um, okay, so we have that selected. Treat applique as fill. All right, now we're going to look at our steps menu here. I think the one might not be important. I think it's the ice cream, but I'll do both of them just to show you. So I'm going to select. So you have three steps for the one. You have your tack down stitch, your, no, position stitch, tack down stitch, finishing stitch, which is satin in this instance. So the positioning stitch. I'm going to go down to the color box here. I'm going to, what do I call this, right click. I put two fingers on my thing, <laughs> on my screen, on my, uh, what do you call that, mouse pad. Okay, so right now it's clicked as not applique, but I want it to be a position. And then I'm going to click the next one. This would be like my tack down stitch. I'm going to right click that and I'm going to name it material. And then the finishing stitch, you don't do anything. So same thing, the cone. So that is position. That is material. And we're going to go through each part of the applique for the, um, the ice cream. So that is position that is material position and so you know so on and so forth all right almost done no. that's if you want to change the color okay position material okay and then the rest are all the satin finishes for the ice cream cone now i could hit this button here which is remove hidden stitches and I think it did it for the most part. I see it here. I don't see it here. Yes, it did. It's just those jump stitches. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's still going to do this placement stitch as the hole number one. It's still going to do the tack down stitch as the hole number one. So you'll still have material under there. I haven't figured out how you could even change it to where the the one would kind of, the ice cream cone would kind of cut into the one. I haven't figured that out. I don't know if that's possible. But what we have done is the satin stitch of the number one is now it's going to stop here and it's going to jump here and you'll just have to cut those jump stitches. But it'll stop here and jump to here. Then it'll keep going and then it'll stop here and jump. It does a little section here because you could see it through um, these ice cream cones. And then it'll stop and jump again. And so you'll just cut those jump stitches. But now, if you do have a lighter co color fabric here, you know, pay attention. If this is a dark fabric you're filling the one with, you don't want to see it you know, just think about that. Hold the two fabrics over each other. See how visible it is. Because the fabric will still be underneath. But that satin stitch, so say you do outline it in navy blue, you're not going to see a dark navy blue line underneath your cone here anymore. And make sure you're doing your placement and your, your tack down stitch a light neutral color so that you won't see that underneath your cone if you're doing a lighter color for that fabric. So that's how you can do overlapping appliques and delete the satin stitches um, of the applique so they're not shown through. So I hope that helps. Okay. All right. All right. Do, do, do. Um, Jennifer said, I see your design is very close to the edge. How close is too close? I think, so we we move things around now, but um, I think you can go all the way. The problem, that, the things you have to think about if you're Ed, I personally, okay, so like if you've seen me hoop a onesie before or a toddler shirt, you see that I tape all of the excess fabric around the edges of the hoop. So that can become a problem if this whole design is pushed up all the way to the top so obviously there it's not gonna let you so like right there so you see how close I got it um, uh, if I do that I gotta make sure I don't have anything in the way at the top of the hoop right here when it's stitching so 
just keep that in mind. It can go as close to the hoop as it has, as it can. And you can also do something on your machine called a tracing stitch. Uh, it's not a stitch, it's a trace just feature. And what it will do is when once you load your design on the machine, you can press that. On, on my machines, on the Brothers, it looks like a dashed box with an arrow on one end of the dashed line. And it will go and trace and show you the outer edges of, like almost if your design was a rectangle or a square, it's going to go and trace that square, the outer edges of the design. And then you can see if the needle gets too close to the hoop. Um, but normally, I think, especially with the, the PE800, if you load a design and it's outside of the hoop area, it's not going to let you stitch it. All right. Yes, yeah, so Carol said to always check your design before stitching. So like we had this example last week with the hat. With that especially, because you have a 5 by 7 hoop on your machine, but you're really only stitching a 4 by 4 area. So um, you really have to trace to make sure you're going right where you want it to go because you don't want your needle to hit the brim board, which is inside your 5 by 7 hoop. Um, okay, going, going to go... Going to have to go afterward and rewatch. I have embroilings, but I'm a newbie to my embroidery machine and software. Okay, Jenny. Well, yeah, we'll see you next time. And I hope this helps you tonight. Oh, thank you. I'm not a good YouTuber. Please hit the like button. <laughs> Please click the thumbs up button. Um, I think if you're on your phone, you have to hit the X out of the chat box. And then you can see the, the like button. So thank you. Um... All right, on the PE800, it will flash up on the top where the hoop picks are if the design is too large for the hoop selected. Um, so I, I know, like, it would be more complicated if you're doing a 4x4 four four design. If you were doing a 4x4 four four design and you have your 4x4 four four hoop loaded on the machine but the design is too big, the machine's automatically going to highlight the 5x7 hoop and think you have that on the machine because the machine really can't tell which hoop you have on. But it's going to tell you on the screen that design is too large for a 4x4 four four hoop. Because it, it highlights the hoops as you put the design on. So say it's a really small design. It'll have pictures of, I think, three hoops. One's like a 2x3, a 4x4, four four, a 5x7. And then um, you will, uh, if you increase the size of the design or you load a design that's bigger, it's going to no longer have that hoop colored it kind of like fades it as it gets too big those hoops will fade and only the um the f hoop it will fit in will stay colored Does that makes sense that's on brother okay um okay so i hear the kids dancing down downstairs <laughs> all right um let's see so I think that's it. I told my husband I was going to try to stick to only doing an hour video tonight. And it is 8 o'clock now. So if you have any other questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat box now. And so I can answer them and we can finish up for tonight. Let's see. All right. Norma, yes, we're on live and you can play it back later. So that's one of the cool things I like about switching from doing Facebook Live to YouTube Live. Even though all the Facebook Live videos are still in the group feed, they're not easily accessible. They're not easy to find because the feed fills up. People are posting stuff every day. And um, it's not always easy to find those videos. So here on YouTube, they, you know, you have a nice list. You can see all the videos at one time. You can see the, the name of the topic for each video. So this will be much easier to refer people to when they have a question about Embrilliance. I could say, go check out the Embrilliance video on YouTube. So, um, let's see. I want to make sure there was... I mean, there's so many features. So many features. Um, I know I've shown y'all before another cool feature... I would need a different design though. So say, let me show you one more cool thing. But I have to find the right uh, design that it would work with. I know, I don't know where it is on here. So I'm not, 
not as organized as I want to be. Uh, is it? No, it's not on here either. No, it is on my. It's a really cute design. I like from um, Joy Kate Designs, and it it it's a good example to um to show you. It's called Saints Trio. Let's find it. I always look in the wrong spot because I have stuff everywhere. <laughs> no, it's not here either. Uh, no, okay. Let me find something else. Maybe this one. What I want to show you is if you want to split a design. No, that one's probably not good. The only other place it might be. No. Okay, I'll have to show you another time so that I can be a little more prepared with um with having a good example to show you. But um maybe I could show you one here just to see. Say for some reason you wanted this to only be okay, here we go. You only wanted this to be a one layer cone. I guess you could do this. But say some things were hooked up and they were the, the, the same color. And so they were on the same step and you wanted to separate them. Um, this isn't a good example. But say I, I wanted to make, okay, here we go. Say I wanted to make the, the bottom of the cone here a different color than the top, just for whatever reason. All right, so I'm gonna select it. Let me zoom in. I'm gonna go to Stitch Simulator. Stitch Simulator is where you can make some changes. So I'm gonna go through this. It's doing my one. It's doing that. Okay, here's all the the placement. So say, you know, I still wanted maybe the same fabric, but I wanted the color. So we're at the mint. Um, there we go. So I can. All right, so. You see it does a satin stitch for the top first, and there. Okay, so then we can use these buttons here. Back up, back up, back up, back up, there. Say so now I want it to stop, and from now on I want it to do a different color. I can hit this stop button, and it's gonna ask me to change the color, and I could change it to whatever. So say I wanted it like an orange. Okay, so now it made the rest of that step a different color. And so we did this, the, the top is still mint, but now I changed all of this to orange. And now they are two separate steps on the side here. So that's the best example I can give you right now. But like some designs I've bought, like they were three different symbols and they were black and gold, like the example I wanted to show you, but I don't know where the design is. <laughs> um, but some of the gold in this, you know, he had this cute little trio design. Some of the gold in the first and the gold in the middle was on the same step. But I just wanted to take that first little design and put it on a burp cloth. I, could, I couldn't figure out how to step, separate them. And that's how you can do it. You can use Stitch Simulator to make a stop and just change it to be a different color in the computer. And now you separated those steps. So I hope that helps. All right. Um, okay. La looks like last question is Susan asks, "Can you type a name on an arch?" And yes, we did that a little bit earlier. So I'm going to select. Um, let's do this cute hopscotch font. Okay, I got the font, and I'll put Abigail this time. It's always typey Lisa's name. <laughs> All right. So here's Abigail, and I'm gonna put it underneath the design. But say I want it to curve up, I can pick which one works. So let's see. Bridge up, curves it this way, and then bridge, that's bridge down. And then bridge up would curve it that way. So say, say I wanted to put her name on top, that would look better. I can move this down here and then move her name 
on top. And then if I don't like that font, I can go and find something else like that um, and so forth. And then you could, there's so many things you could do. Now these, all these things I'm showing you though is only with BX fonts. When I would put just a, B, a PES font, it doesn't give me, I think as many of these, it doesn't give me these options. Then you would have to just move each letter around manually. There may be some other ways you could do it with the line and distribute, but I'm not sure. I know the BX fonts give you the most options. Um, then if I wanted, this just makes the bottom and the top is flat. So that the, now the bottom is flat and the top is rounded. Um, I showed you, I haven't played with this too much. That's the order. Um, you can slant it make it like italicized on either side. Um, the bottom curve, so I can do like this. There's lots of options, so you can play around with it. You can also, so let's do, I got this other font that is real skinny, the farmhouse one. So this is a farmhouse font, so say I did normal here, but Say I wanted it to be just a little bit thicker. So there's it. There it is. It looks thick. But um, say I wanted it a little bit thicker. I can go to Stitch and Compensation. And you could just move it up maybe to two points. See, so yeah, that goes too much. Um, but like say I just wanted it a little thicker. Depending on what kind of font you have. Um, you can make the fill a little bit thicker. Or if you bought a satin stitch font that you find is not looking good after you stitch it out, you can increase the compensation and see if that helps. All right. Thank you, Con. Third time, third, uh, third time's a charm. There we go. It took three YouTubes to not have any hiccups. So I don't have any crazy kids running in the room yet. I was actually able to start the, the live. I had a little hiccup before um, where I wasn't doing it right, but it worked. I'm so happy. So I hope everyone enjoyed this video tonight, and um, just if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. If you like tonight's video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, you can find links to almost everything I do. Let me go back to the screen here. Okay, so um, you can find links to almost everything. Um, that I use in the description box of the video. I think I got it all jumbled. It's a jumbled mess right now. I'll go and fix it to where they have spaces in between things. But they have a link to the Facebook group. They have a link to if you want to get a newsletter from me, which I'm trying to be better about. But the newsletter will basically it will send you an email anytime I write a new blog post. And then I'm trying to be better about sending just regular email updates telling you what's going on because I'm not I don't post to my blog very often, but I link to my blog, which I have several tutorials on there, and then links to all of the supplies that I use. I buy most of my supplies from Amazon. Um, I also buy some things from Sewing Machines Plus, and there's the link to In Brilliance in the description box too. So, all right, I hear my kids having a dance party. I'm gonna go join in with them. I hope everybody has a good night, and I will see y'all next Friday for more embroidery machine tutorials. I will hopefully have my smaller PE770 back. If you have ever have any suggestions of things that you want to hear about for these Friday Night Lives, um, please put that in the comments below of this video or in the Facebook group. I usually try to put out a poll to you know get a feel of what people want to talk about. But I'm always open to hearing new ideas. There's so many things we want to do. We have to get them all in a row now. <laughs> so I hope everybody has a good night. And I will see y'all next time. How do I turn it off? <laughs> okay, bye guys. <laughs>